How are you guys enjoying open so far? All right, all right. You guys just ate. How are you guys enjoying open so far? <laughs> Woo! Um, it is amazing to be with you guys. Again, not only to be in this group with you, people that love Jesus, people that love youth and ministry, and to trying to figure out how to do it right. That's why you guys are here, trying to figure out options to stretch and to grow, and then to turn around and be able to look out that window and see the yeah, we're not going to look at that. <laughs> it's, it's gorgeous. And one of the beautiful things about all of this is that this is a part of a phenomenal journey, a phenomenal adventure. And what is what does this all come to? Um, I'm looking and I'm thinking back as, we, as we've been prepping for this. Um, for myself, God has been working and prepping and prepping. And this has not been a several month thing. God has been prepping and redeveloping and resharpening and refocusing for, for a really long time, for several years. And that's the kind of accumulation of what we're going to be talking about here today. Um, originally, this was supposed to be a uh, series of six one-hour sessions, so we're not doing that. Um, we're going to take some time in order to kind of help make sure that we do this well and do it right and that I don't go over. Um, if you would pray with me. Um, Heavenly Father, thank you so much for today. Thank you so much for all the organizers that have poured time and sweat and energy into this. Um, all the different people that have shared phenomenal things about their life and what you're doing and what you're teaching and how you're growing and the direction and the possibilities of what you're calling us to do as far as reaching out the possibilities of what you're calling your people to do. And as you call us to move forward, help us to listen and help us to hear your voice so that as you lead us, that you would help us to turn and lead others and that we would do it in a spirit of love and that we would do all this through your love. So speak, Lord, and help us not to miss out on what you have. Um, and Lord, continue just to, to give us new enlightenment and to stretch us so that we can pass this on. Thanks, Lord. We ask and pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Um, again, it's beautiful to be with you. Um, I'm talking to you again about leading through love, and there are several things we're going to talk about, and some of these things we're going to go through really quickly. There are notes, papers floating around somewhere on the edges of the, um, of the rows, and so some of this is pretty common sense, and then as we get to some of the other stuff, I'll slow down. First of all, again, God calls us to love, and this is, this is kind of like a no-brainer because He calls us to love in general. Um, yeah, he calls us to love in general. Um, we see this in Levit Leviticus chapter 19 and Luke chapter 10, the idea that God calls us to love our neighbor as herself, to be able to love on the people that are around us. At the same time, God takes it up a notch, and he tells his disciples about love. We see this, again, he, the question comes up with this idea of, well, what am I supposed to do? Um, I've done everything. Well, you've, you know, love God, love your neighbor. Um, but then there's this tension that starts out. And where does it start out? It starts out not in the public. It starts off in the private. It starts off with the disciples. The disciples are together with Jesus, and they're bickering back and forth. Who's the greatest? I'm better. I'm better than you. Well, like, you're, you're small, and that's why you're, you know, that's why later on we're going to run, blah, blah, blah. And they, they go, they go, they're going back and forth, and they're arguing. And they come up to Jesus, and Jesus says, it's the one who serves. He throws it out there. Right at the beginning, to be great is to serve. Why do we serve? We serve because we love. We see this through Jesus' example. Uh, again, this idea of God calling us to this journey, this adventure, the possibilities of life with Jesus are out there. I look at where I am. I look at all the different things that I'm doing. I'm looking at all the things I'm involved with. And I bet if you do too, if you stop and you look at where you are now, compared to where you could have been without Jesus, it's a world different. To be able to connect with people that you wouldn't have otherwise, your students, your parents, your other leaders, would you still do that if you weren't connected with Jesus? This journey, this walk with Jesus is phenomenal. It's a crazy, amazing adventure. But sometimes in adventures and in any kind of travel, we run into these different things that tweak stuff. In any kind of, of travel journey trip, for our, some of a lot of our group coming down here was, it was a trip. Um, <laughs> but um, we run into these things. We run into three really different types of things. We run into speed bumps, we run into potholes, and sometimes we would run into the walls. 
Um, first thing we're going to talk about, this idea of a speed bump. A speed bump, you kind of know what's coming, but it's really easy to miss. So a lot of times we're not paying attention, poof, there's a speed bump. And when you run into that speed bump, what's that all about? Um, again, it's, it's an inconvenience. I mean, certain speed bumps are a little crazier than others, and if you really hit it hard, especially if you're in a low rider, you can totally bottom out and you can mess up your car. Um, but th the idea of these speed bumps, a speed bump, what is it? Honestly, a speed bump, it's an annoyance. I mean, and we all have people like that. We have students. Oh, come on. You got a student that just, like, won't stop. You know, that one student, or sometimes not a student, it's a parent. Sometimes not a parent. It's a church leader. They just go on and on and on. And they just like to press that button. I'm like, you press that button again, I'll push you out the door. <laughs> but there's a lot of things with these annoyances. And we all have people like that. Sometimes we are, we're the annoyance. But this idea of an annoyance, it's a speed bump. But we encounter those. And sometimes it's one of those things, on one hand, it makes the trip, you know, something memorable. On the other hand, it, it, it kind of tweaks our trip sometimes. At the same time, this idea, it's not just this, this speed bump idea, it's not just about people that annoy us. It's about differences. We all have people that are, again, not like us. Um, Lily's example of bringing people in together because we are different. It's a beautiful thing. But a lot of times... I don't want to do it that way. You know, that's a little too OCD for me. You know, or it's like, you know, you need to like put some structure there because like I don't know what we're doing and like if I don't know something, I, you know, uh. Um, and we look at that and we stress out with some of those things. And, and again, these are things that kind of slow us down. It's not just people that annoy us. Sometimes it's also people that are just different. Um, different with their background, different with their personality, different with their training, different with their philosophy. We run into the people like that. At the same time, we run into potholes. Again, a pothole, you can see it a little further away. It's a little bit more obvious. Um, but sometimes these potholes, I mean, they can, they can really tweak you. I mean, and if it's really bad, I mean, it could totally take you out. What does that look like? Very simply, it's the idea of miscommunication. You know, on one hand, for the most part, we can control mis miscommunication. It can be easier identified and easier fixed. I mean... Um, earlier, Dan was talking about having multiple, multiple places for us to put down information. It's a simple thing. Um, we, were, um, we were talking earlier about connecting with parents, to be able to do that strong, to do that well, because the kids don't always give them the flyers, right? Um, communication, sometimes that's a huge thing, but I mean, it's one of those things that really can trip us up. It's one thing to have somebody annoyed with you. It's another thing when you got to deal with something that you could have fixed. Then we run into walls. And again, with a wall, some walls are, I mean, they're really obvious. Some walls you don't want to run into at all. I mean, you take a military bunker barricade, you don't want to mess with that. Because not only is that a wall, but that's something that will lash out against you. Um, and these are things that are a little more intense. Um, these are things where we come into more aggressive things, like attacks, opposition, sometimes it's a closed door. Um, over the last three years, God has been readjusting things in my life, kind of shutting this door here, shutting this door there, this part in ministry, that part in ministry, this thing with this group of people. And, it, and, it, and it's an idea, when you hit that wall, what do you do? You see the wall coming, you know it's coming. You know, you see those people coming, you see that situation coming. What do you do with that? You can stop, or you can try to go around it, or you can try to barrel through it. Barreling through anything, it's going to hurt. It's going to cost something. So we don't typically want to run through those type of barriers. We want to do something to address that. Um, but as we encounter these obstacles, there are also something else. Um, there are people we come in contact with. I'm just going to call them on mice. It's a family of on mice. First, we've got on my nerves. <laughs> yeah. um, again, these are people that annoy us. Um, and again, we got students, you got parents to do this. You know, well, I wouldn't do it that way. Well, you know, and back in my day when I was a youth pastor, and, and not these are people you can you can deal with, but sometimes, oh man, they're coming this way. Don't see me, don't see me. You know, and that's, that's kind of how we initially want to react. We don't want to really deal with them, but we do because we love them. Um, and we, Lord help us, we love them. Um, <laughs> but the idea, again, 
there are people we run into that they annoy us. They're on my nerves. At the same time, we got people on my case. Um, these are people that they have a specific, a specific issue. Well, you know what? Um, I think the New American Standard, that is the only way to go because that is the most biblically, literally correct. Um, you know, no, that, that's, that's, that, that's too stiff. It's not to, this, it's, it has no relevance on today. We've got to use the message. Um, different things, again, they've got a specific issue. You know, it's about worship music. It's about doing this thing, about doing that thing. And those specific issues... Um, they're on my case. They're, they're on our case about stuff. But we also got people that are on my back. Um, these are people that they seem like every time you turn around, they're always upset about something. What do you do about this? What do you do about that? Always, always upset. What does that look like? Um, we got people that are always on my time. It's got to be my time right here, right now. I want this in triplicate now. Um, which leads us to people that it's got to be on my way. The, my way or the highway. Um, when we look at all these different people, when we look at all these different factors, um, how do you deal with that? This comes up to the, our last group of people on my side. People that we don't always know um, about anything, but when it comes down to it, people that are on our side. These are people that they're going to be there, um, and they've got the will and the desire to do what it takes to support, encourage, correct, to grow with us. And because the truth is, my loss is our loss. Our loss is my loss. Here are a couple of very simple things to apply and to follow through with that. Um, helps to remember. One, it helps to remember the example that Christ showed. Jesus gave and he gave sacrificially. He gave all. It's important to remember the love and the grace we personally have received with Christ. One of the jokes that we have for me is, I wasn't always a youth pastor. Looking back at my failures and my flaws and I'm being a mess. And I see where God has come above and beyond. When we remember these things, it's easier to love. To remember, it helps to remember that God creates us with a different purpose. Again, the idea of 1 Corinthians 12, we all come together, whether it be to worship um, or to serve and to help out with a website, any of those things. It also helps to remember that God has a plan for others. God has a plan for us, but God has a plan for other people, the people in our ministry, the people doing things, the people interacting. These are all important to connect um, because that's what we do, why we do what we do, because we believe that God has a plan for these people. We've got to remember that God is not finished with anybody else. God's not finished with other people. God's still working on them. And it doesn't matter if it's a parent or if it's a church leader, if it's a pastor, God's still working on them. And at the same time, God's not finished with you. Each one of us, we still have those missing holes, those missing things that still need to be addressed. It also helps to remember that in some cases, it requires intensive prayer and that fasting are, are required. Again, Jesus talks to disciples and says, you know what? For some of these demons, you got to fast, you got to pray. For some of those leaders, for some of those parents, you got to fast, you got to pray. Um, because that's the only way that things are going to be changed. God has to do the work. It also helps to remember that some conflicts require the involved participation of others. Matthew 8, um, 18, the idea that when we have a problem, sometimes we got to bring other people into the picture. Because sometimes it's our problem because we don't want to face it. Because, you know what, I really don't want to talk to that person. Sometimes we need somebody to come alongside to help other people to see it. Because we can't do it on our own. It also helps to remember that some conflicts, they got to be released because we can't win all of them. We run into issues with parents, with students, students that are going off their rocker and they're going to do their own thing regardless. It's hard to let them go. We run into parents and sometimes the parents, you want to win them on your side, but sometimes you got to let them go. Sometimes staff members, you want to be partners, you want to move forward together. Sometimes certain issues, we got to let go. Here's some real quick action items. Very simply, to immerse yourself in the Word, to be able to di dive deep, to, to, to soak in what God has to say, because on our own, sometimes we just don't have what it, what it, we don't have the insight, we don't have the wisdom. Get it from God. Secondly, rest in God's arms. Sometimes, again, when we're going through dealing with rough people, rough issues, rough situations, sometimes it, we just need to stop and take a breather. Um, for myself, I know, even with those little bumps and drags and things like that, and, and taking road trips. Sometimes we just got to stop and breathe, um, which I don't know about you, for me, that's hard, because I just want to go. Um, 
Another thing is to look at the past, the present, and the potential of others. Um, we see the movie The Avengers. These are people that they have all sorts of amazing things, but they also have so, so all sorts of different kinds of ama- crazy baggage. But it's not until they come together and they're focused and they're, they're doing what they do best together. We see amazing things happen. What would that look like if we all came together? Um, we also need to give sacrificially to be able to give even in the midst of some of that hardship, um, because God gave sacrificially. When we're giving sacrificially, um, sometimes it hurts, but in that hurt, we can remember what God has done because we also need to do primarily for God. Anything else is a bonus. The Word of God in Romans tells us that we're supposed to take care of of things on earth as if we were to do it for God. Um, Anybody we went over, anybody that, that connects with us on top of that, that's a bonus. So we also need to need, we just need to take some time to remember that God sees, He feels, and He understands. In the midst of all the different stuff going on, God knows. God feels our pain. When we get rejected, when we get pushed aside, when we can't get a clue because somebody else is upset at us for something that we might not have a clue what in the world happened. Remember that God, God knows. We also need to be able to remember the life to come. All this stuff here, it's temporary. It'll come and it'll go. Ministry aspects, they're going to come, they're going to go. It's already been mentioned. Students are going to come and they're going to go. As best as we can, win as many as we can. Win as many as you can. Um, Paul again tells us that as, long as, it dep- as far as it depends on you, be at peace with everybody. As far as we can. In the midst of all those rough spots, we need to do that. And the last thing I've got here is to keep pressing on to the, be the best you can with all all that you have to give. This road trip, this adventure, we might not be able to carry everything. You can't take the kitchen sink with you on a backtrack packing trip. You, all you can do is take what you got to do what you got, to have the best time that you got. And it'll be a crazy, amazing adventure, even in the midst of those rough spots. That's what I got. Thanks.